Hello, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and I'm going to be going over into Math's 5th grade, Module 1, Lesson 1. I'd like to start out going over the I can objective, which can be found here. It says, I can describe place value relationships in multi-digit whole numbers. And now the learning objective here is students should be able to recognize the 10 to 1 relationship among place value positions. Prior learning from fourth grade is students recognized that a digit in one place in a multi-digit whole number represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. Now what that's really talking about here is if we're looking at a place value chart and if I start at the ones place here and I move up next door, I'm moving to the left to the tens place value, students know from fourth grade that what they just did was they multiplied by 10. Now for fifth grade, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be moving past that. Yes, we're learning that as you move up to the thousands and the millions and the billions, every time you move one place value to the left, you're going times 10. But the opposite is true is if you move to the right. So now let's say if I moved from the 10 down to the 1. So if I moved from the 1 to the 10, I'm multiplying by 10. So now what do I do if I'm going from the 10s down to the 1s? What's the opposite of times 10? Divide by 10. Now in fifth grade, the same way to say divide by 10 is by saying 1 tenth. So if I'm moving down to the ones and into the decimals here, if I'm moving down, if I'm getting smaller, I'm going to say that place value is divide by 10 or it's 1 tenth of the size. Now, in the spark you're learning on page five of the student page, they have this problem. On a road trip, Anna and her family stop at a ranch where bales of hay are being weighed. Describe the relationship between the two weights. How can you use the relationship to compare the weights? And so we see the first one says 50 and the one next to it says 500. All right, I would like you to use that information of knowing that 50 and 500 are right next to each other. Can you describe the relationship between 50 and 500 in writing? Go ahead and pause right here and see if you can describe the difference. All right, hopefully you got a chance to write down your um, understanding. What I would like to point out is that the difference between 50 and 500 is this one zero right here. So if I was saying that 50 to 500, I could say that's being multiplied by 10. To where the opposite is true, and I could say that if I go from 500 to 50, that size is 1 tenth of 500. Now, I'm skipping over to page 7, and I'd like to look at problem number 2. Let's just go ahead and zoom up on that problem here. Now it says complete each column in the table and they give me three numbers and they want to know 10 times as much, one times as much, and one tenth of the number that they gave us. I would love for you to try to fill out just this purple chart. Go ahead and pause this video right here and fill out those couple of blanks. All right. Hopefully you got a chance to fill those out. I'm gonna go over it with you now. If I have 7,000 and I want 10 times as much as that, hopefully last year in fourth grade, you learned a trick. If you multiply by 10, just add a zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my number 7,000, but I'm gonna add one more zero, making my number now 70,000. It moved over to the left in my place value and now my number is larger. And I know if I multiply something by one, my number doesn't change. So that middle column is gonna be the same number they gave us. It's gonna be 7,000. And for the first row, they already gave us the answer one tenth. 
all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross out that zero. I'm taking a zero away. I'm dividing by 10. I'm taking one tenth of, which means take away a zero. All right. Now moving down to that second row, 800. I want 10 times as much as 800. So I'm gonna write that number, 800, but again, multiplying by 10, I'm gonna add one more zero, making my number 8,000. They gave us the one, one times as much, which is 800. Now I need to find out what is one tenth of 800. Again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross out one of those zeros, I'm gonna take a zero away, divide by 10, or one tenth of, and the number it's gonna leave me with is 80. Now looking at 600,000. If I do 10 times as much, let's go ahead and count the zeros because th these are big numbers. So in that 600,000 here, I have one, two, three, four, five zeros. Now remember, I need to add one more zero to the 10 times as much. So in this number here, saying six million, I have six zeros. And now we can see going from five to six, I did add that one zero. I found 10 times as much. Again, one times as much, just take my original number of 600,000. Now finding one tenth of, I need to take away one of those zeros. So now I'm only gonna have four zeros following that six. So six with four zeros leaves me at 60,000, showing that 60,000 is one tenth is smaller than my original 600,000. All right, now moving into B, talking about how does the number of zeros in each number change in the 10 times as much column. And I know I already said this, we're adding a zero. How do the zeros change in the one times as much? They don't. There is no change. And in the one tenth of column, we're pulling that zero away. So we are taking away a zero. All right, hopefully that was a good little snippet to help you with this lesson. I would love for you to go ahead and complete this lesson and make sure you're doing the check your understanding. And I'll see you for lesson two.